Hello again. It is the new year with Carrie and Keelan for our weekly hot takes. We took a break through the holiday season, but we are now back. I am Carrie Reed Davis with Carrie Sells the City. And I'm Keelan Harvey with the Harvey Home Team in Highlands Residential. So Keelan, now that we are here at the beginning of 2024, I wanted to find out from you, what are some of the things that some of the professionals are starting to talk about to forecast what might happen in the real estate market here in 2024? I love it. Yeah, I like to nerd out on this part. It's important for all my customers to understand what's going on next year. And so I nerd out, you know, I'm a mortgage nerd and find as much data as I can. So I'm you know, with my agents, I'm kind of famous for the prediction of what's going to happen next year. Pretty close last year. Uh, this year, uh, we're really excited. Uh, I mean, I can nerd out on things like forward inflation and Fed balance sheet, but you guys will probably fall asleep. So we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go straight to the fun stuff. And um, there's some information out there to really make us understand what's going on with the Fed. And one of the things that I like is they have this thing called a Fed dot plot map. Okay. And it might sound nerdy. All it is is a bunch of dots on a map and they represent a Fed member and what Fed members are are voting on what they want to do next year, which is important information because that's going to affect interest rates. Now, they purposely keep it anonymous so we don't know who the person is behind the dots. Okay. But I can conclude that every single one of them, there's only two of them that said no cuts. The majority are 50 to 100 basis points. One said 150 basis point reduction in rates and then into 2025 and into 2026 kind of the same thing that we thought is rates you know they're they're talking about rates going down 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 so um basis okay. points are tenths of a percentage so okay. think about that i knew you're gonna ask that yeah Gary. that was gonna be like okay well, let's remind <laughs> everybody what that means yeah. <laughs> Tenth of a percentage so 150 basis points is one and a half percent so okay. reduction so we're we're definitely in the camp of, as we said, rates are going to go down uh, this next couple of years. And according to the Fed, that is, in fact, what's going to happen. Well, and aren't they supposed to have a, a Fed meeting in March? Isn't that the next scheduled Fed meeting? Yeah, uh, I believe um, March 20th. Uh, okay. Actually, there's one on January 31st, too. Uh, there is. Coming up. Yeah, January okay. 31st is the next one. And then March 20th and then May 1st. So um, another piece of that that's interesting is, you know, just like sports betting, they have also market odds of what the Fed's going to do. And the January meeting, I mean, there's only 7% that was thinking some type of reduction. And we think okay. it's going to take a little bit. But when you get to the March meeting, it's 68%. So odds are actually pretty good. And this March meeting is when we're going to see that first reduction. Uh, and then as we get on to May and June, it's 94 and 100 percent. So if we're looking at odds, if we're placing bets, uh, the reality is we could actually have possibly multiple cuts by the time we get to June, okay. which is really going to jumpstart us for lower rates. Um, I mean, lower rates have already started coming down. So when we say these decreases, right, the, the Fed is cutting rates. Uh Mortgage companies are smart. That doesn't mean overnight it's just going to be like 5%, right? right. They, they build this stuff into the margins, you know? So we're going to see a steady, gradual improvement in rates. And those those specific dates, they could make a huge impact. I'm not going to hold my breath, but definitely like improvements in rates and us heading in the right direction. So all in all, all data is implying you know, and there's really nowhere to escape for the Fed anymore. I feel like they were playing with some numbers like job reports and stuff previously. They don't have anywhere to hide anymore. Like all the data is coming out, like the reality is, and even Big Mouth Powell, uh, you know, super hawkish, that, that's uh, that's nerd talk for aggressive, uh, has right. finally said, okay, cuts next year. So, right. you know. Well, they can't, they can't keep doing to us what they've done to us over this last year. I mean, the households are struggling, you know, nothing's been move, moving. I mean, December was painfully slow in real estate. So many agents that I'm talking to and even, you know, other title and, and escrow companies, everything just really hit the brakes at the end of December. Like there just really wasn't any movement. And, you know, if, if they're going to, you know, continue to build our economy, I think that they've, they've got to give us a little bit of relief in that area where people can actually start to make some moves again. Yeah, I mean, the goal is for them to slow down money, which I think they have done. I mean, the reality is they left rates too low for too long. 
you know, and then they increase them too much for too long. And if they overshoot it, we're into a recession, which a lot of us are concerned that they are going to overshoot it. You know, they keep talking about a soft landing and this, I don't know, this arbitrary 2% number that they keep talking about with the PCE report, personal consumption expenditures. It's just an inflation report, fancy talk for inflation report that they love to look at. They have this arbitrary 2% that they're like, thinking romantically they're just going to land right on and you know we're going to everything's going to be all gravy a lot of us are not sure that's going to be the case but the good news is for real estate every single time that we go into a recession interest rates go down so i mean that's just going to make rates go even lower uh for real estate so um you know i hate to reiterate this it's a great time to buy right now as rates go down things are going to get crazy homes are going to appreciate um which i can elaborate a little bit later on in this chat as I talk about some of this prediction stuff. Okay. Um, what, what, all, what other kind of predictions do you have to tell us? What else do you Well, see? specifically, we think rates are going to be between five and high 6% for 2024. This is also okay. dependent on what the Fed does and their response to things. So wasn't that's it, back, back in October, we were kind of in the high sevens, weren't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, well, for some companies over eight. So I mean, we've had a vast improvement and I'm not quoting rates, but I would say it would start with a six now if you're working with a good company, which is huge. Um, we just had a buyer that was uh, capped off at like 620. And now uh, we reanalyzed things with rates going down. It was like 695. Uh, so as far as what they'd be pre-approved for. So we've already had a pretty significant impact on what these rates have done for where people qualify, or for me, mostly, most importantly, where people are comfortable with a monthly payment. So, you know, that's what we really pay attention to is where's your comfortable monthly payment. And, you know, just by nature, rates going down is going to increase what you qualify for to have that same payment. So very, very exciting. Um, if you haven't, if you're out there and, you know, you have a pre-approval, um go check with your lender um and and see where you land right now because you might be surprised that as rates have improved already uh you know you're making an improvement on what you qualify for i think that's huge news i mean knowing that the rates have come down and i've noticed as i've got you know some new buyers i'm working with now that the new year the new year has began um and then there's definitely more coming out on the market like i'm checking every day active listings and it's nice to see inventory increasing so I'm hoping that that continues for people as well. Yeah, it's better, but it's still going to be a supply and demand issue next year, and which which will be alleviated that we think if we get under that 6% mark as far as interest rates, that's when we're going to unlock those move up buyers. Because the reality is there's a lot of people sitting on a low rate with a lot of equity in their home that would love to get into a different home, like, you know, a bigger home, upsize. Who knows, you know, your circumstances, but a lot of people want to make some changes. And uh, once we get below that 6%, that's going to unlock that whole world where these people are comfortable now uh, to get into a place where they can be a step up buyer, which will uh, create a lot of inventory as well. So that'll be helpful. Yeah, I have I have people that I'm actively working with right now that they are they've got that nice 3% interest rate and them moving. It's something that it's going to take a lot for them. Or they're going to have to be getting enough equity out of their home in order to, you know, get that get them to move. So it's definitely conversations I'm hearing have it um have happened right now. So well, and don't forget, everybody. I mean, you can tap into that equity in your home with a home equity line of credit. We have certain programs. Uh, called, we have a trade up program, which I'm not going to get into detail, but we have certain programs that can help you to do that. There's, I'm finding a lot of people that want to keep their home and rent it out. I mean, with that low interest rate, you're making money on that. So why would you sell it, right? Unless right. you wanted to take that money and move it into your, a new home, which there's no nothing wrong with that either. You know, I'm a big fan of holding real estate, but if you can take that money, put it into something else, you're just taking a $500,000 asset and turning it into an $800,000 asset. It's still going to appreciate just the same. It's still an investment. Don't get me wrong, but the reality is you could also rent that property out, keep it and still upgrade to a new property and expand your real estate portfolio. So, I mean, there's options to be had. Yeah, no, I think, you know, it just depends on circumstances like you were saying. Yeah. 
to each your own. I mean, and and that's why you talk to somebody like me. We can look at your debt to income. We can look at your overall outgo. You know, it's got to make sense financially for you. But, you know, you wouldn't be the first already this year that I'm talking to right now about doing those type of things and expanding their portfolio. So, um, yeah. So as far as real estate, inventory remain tight. And then as far as demand, we know it's going to be very, very strong. So uh, formations, meaning households, like if you leave mom and dad's home, you're a formation. If a couple splits, that's another formation. The ability to buy a home far, far outpaces completions, which is new construction. So, I mean, this is a problem I think we're going to have uh, for the next couple of years. And if you own a home, it's a good problem because that means your home's going to appreciate. Um, and next year, we think homes, my next part of the prediction are going to appreciate by four and a half to five percent. Now, each area is specific, right? Um, it depends on where you're at. I think it'll be under that in some places. I think it's going to be well over that in a lot of places. Personally, I feel like that's a little conservative. But even if that's the case, if that's the case, it's not a bad problem to have. If you have a five hundred thousand dollar home, five percent appreciation, that's twenty five grand you just made that year. So it's nothing to you know to cry about. I mean, this right. is fantastic. And last year, it appreciated at 6% in the face of 8% interest rates. So like real estate is strong, very, very strong. So, Well, I think that's all encouraging news. I mean, I think there's so many of us, you know, whether you're an agent or you're looking to buy or sell, wanting to hear that the market is, you know, going to improve because there's just, there's a lot of people that haven't made any moves due to the interest rates being so high and just a little uncertainty. Um, but once again, I, I don't believe that things are going to crash. I know that you don't believe that either. And so it's nice to, to have this data and this information to be able to show people that, you know, real estate is still a sound investment. Yeah. And if you think real estate's going to crash, I encourage you to reach out to me. I mean, I'll go yeah. through history. I have so much data and facts and how different things are from back in 2008. I know it's stung, but you're completely doing yourself wrong by staying in that mindset where you're missing a huge opportunity. And not to forget my real estate agents out there, transactions this year is predicted to go up by 15 to 20 percent. Okay. So uh, not Fantastic. huge, but we'll take it. <laughs> I mean, compared to last year, I mean, it was just, you know, and I've, I've talked to agents that have, you know, been in the business for 30 years and it's, they've never, they've never seen the market do with what it has done over this last year. So um, I think that we've hopefully weathered the storm and that, you know, things are going to, you know, things are going to increase. I am seeing review dates again, as I'm sifting through the MLS looking for houses for my buyers. So I think it'll be really interesting over these next you know, month or two to see how that how that affects prices, because I think, you know, we'll find out what the competition is going to be like as we see what these homes close at that I've had a review date, how um, what that percentage over list price they actually closed for. And it's also something to keep in mind where January historically has always been just nuts. January, February in the Northwest. I mean, I don't it seems like something after Christmas, something clicks. Um, with interest rates being where they've been, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see if that's the trend this year. But I still think, you know, it's it's if people want to get into a home, they want to start looking now, start having these conversations now before they wait too long and think the prices are going to keep coming down or whatnot. And then they're going to find out later that that's not the case. So make sure you contact, you know, Keelan or I or somebody that you trust to start having these conversations. Yeah, I had an offer going on Saturday and there was five other offers and we lost. Oh, so, really? Um, I know? haven't found out why yet. I'm curious okay. to know why we lost, but we lost and there was five offers. I mean, that's a change of pace from where we've been for sure. So, well, because with that, these conversations you and I have been having about seller credits for buy downs for rates, those conversations don't exist once you start to have to pay over asking. So, you know, bye it's bye. It, it, well, and it's interesting because our, our conversations, you and I, with everybody else, are going to change based on what's happening in the market. So, you know, what we were talking about just two to three months ago might not be the strategy to have right now. So, And speaking of predictions, we've been preaching this the whole time. This is what's going to happen. You right. know, it's not going to be around forever. As rates go down, these opportunities are going to be gone, you know, and home prices are going to go up. You're going to pay more for a home when you wait. Um, if you don't believe me, look at history. Right, right. Well, um, I'm looking forward to being able to, you know, kind of check ourselves and our data as I as we keep talking. 
um, just so we can go back and really have some history on, you know, we want to give people sound advice. That's what Keelan and I are here for is to make sure that we are giving people sound advice to make educated decisions. And all we can do is present you with information. And if you've got questions, be sure you reach out to us because we want to make sure that you understand, um, you know, everything that we're talking about. And there's so many different pieces and nuances uh, when it comes to purchasing a home. We want to make sure you are doing it the right way. So with that being said, if you are in need to speak with me about selling your house or purchasing a home, I would love for you to reach out. You can reach me at 206-330-330. 6985 or at carriesellsthecity.com. And you can get me at 206-321-4941 or harvey at highlandsmortgage.com. Highlands with an S. Great. Keelan, do you have anything else to share uh, for the for this week? or? We no, I think I'm excited to see where we go. And um, yeah, I hope everybody could be a homeowner. We, uh, you know, we, we, I provide 30 year mortgages. So if my predictions are wrong, I have nowhere to hide. I'm not a transaction guy, nor does Carrie. So understand we're, we're staking a claim on, on what we think is going to happen. And I, I mean, I feel very positive about it. So um, we have lots of data and facts for you. If you're interested, reach out. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Keelan, for taking the time to talk with me and I will look forward to seeing you next week. Till next week. Bye everybody.